All right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, we're here today to uh, announce the arrest of Sergeant Patrick Knight of the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, Department of Detention and Corrections. This arrest stems from an incident that occurred at the Pinellas County Jail on November 19th, 2021, at about 1 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Terrell Johnson uh, was booked into the Pinellas County Jail. Uh, Johnson had been arrested by the St. Petersburg Police Department on a variety of felony charges. Johnson's uh, initial processing at the booking desk at the jail was uneventful, uh, followed all the normal uh, processes and protocols and policies. Uh, and then after initial processing, Johnson was moved to an upstairs holding area uh, where inmates are housed until they appear in court the next day, what's called an initial appearance or first appearance. Uh, while Johnson was in this temporary uh, housing area, uh, he was to receive a health screening, which is normal for inmates uh, that come into the county jail. And at about 7.45 a.m. Uh, on the 19th, during the medical screening, he notified a nurse uh, that he was allergic to tomatoes and that he was requesting a special diet. Uh, the nurse noted the allergy uh, and attempted to continue with the health screening, with the medical screening of Mr. Johnson. Uh, but he became agitated and refused to participate in the medical screening, refused to have his vital signs taken, and really just wanted to, for some reason, harp on this issue about the food allergy to tomatoes and requesting a special diet. Uh, Mr. Johnson began yelling, uh, became very uncooperative with the nurse, and became very uncooperative with the staff. A deputy uh, placed Johnson in handcuffs with his hands behind his back and placed him into a single cell to de-escalate the situation because he was all riled up, he was being very uncooperative, so the deputy put him in the single cell, again handcuffed, uh, to de-escalate things. Uh, Johnson remained uncooperative uh, when he was in the cell, he was yelling, he was screaming, and shortly before 8 o'clock a.m., when he was still in that single cell, handcuffed behind his back, he began kicking the cell door. Now, these single cells are steel doors, they have a small window in them, and so if you start kicking on that door, it's gonna cause a lot of racket, it's gonna cause a ruckus. So he began kicking on that door as he was yelling and screaming. Sergeant Knight uh, was in the hallway uh, near Johnson's cell, along with Corporal uh, Jameson Jesse. They heard Johnson banging on the door, so they went to the cell. Sergeant Knight directed that the cell door be opened, and when the door was opened, Johnson was standing uh, just inside the cell door with his hands cuffed behind his back. And he turned to Sergeant Knight to show him that the handcuffs were too tight. At that point, without provocation or any justification at all, Sergeant Knight slammed Johnson to the ground by pushing him with both hands in the chest. So from a visual standpoint, uh, what happened was the door opened and Mr. Johnson was standing there and just handcuffed behind his back. And Sergeant Knight walked up to him with both hands, pushed him like this and slammed him backward. Um, Johnson hit the ground uh, and banged the back of his head um, against a cement bunk as he went to the ground. Sergeant Knight then immediately, when Johnson is on the ground, handcuffed behind his back, uh, approached Johnson, grabbed his hair, and pinned him against the wall. Sergeant Knight then slapped Johnson in the face uh, with an open hand, and he punched Johnson in the face with a closed fist. The closed fist strikes caused a laceration over Johnson's left eye. And you can see this photograph here to my left is a photograph of Mr. Johnson uh, taken just after the incident happened, and you can of course see the laceration caused over his left eye by Knight punching him uh, in the face, and of course all the bleeding uh, that occurred from that. Well, striking Johnson, Sergeant Knight had Johnson's head braced against the wall, and he was holding his head by his hair. Sergeant Knight pulled Johnson's hair so hard that a clump of hair came out of his head. Johnson asked Sergeant Knight, quote, why are you doing this to me? And told Sergeant Knight that you, quote, went too far. Sergeant Knight didn't respond to the question or to the statement um, and ended up leaving the cell. Johnson did nothing uh, at all that justified Sergeant Knight's actions, either pushing him to the ground, slapping him, punching him in the face, or pulling the hair out of his head. 
After he left the cell, Sergeant Knight um, reported the use of force to Lieutenant Priscilla Campbell, and Sergeant Knight authored an investigative uh, report, an incident report. When Lieutenant Campbell arrived on the scene, uh, she noticed inconsistencies between Sergeant Knight's version of the events and the physical evidence. Sergeant Knight told Lieutenant Campbell that he pulled Johnson's hair, but he did not tell her about any punches or slaps. So when the lieutenant gets there, she says that he opened the door, and as I'll talk about here in a second, he lied about the fact that Johnson was supposedly kicking at him, which he wasn't, and he claims that he pushed Johnson because Johnson had tried to kick him, which again is not true. Uh, and he did not tell the lieutenant anything about the punches or the slaps. Sergeant Knight also told Lieutenant Campbell that Johnson had injured the back of his head and received the laceration over his eye from this single fall backward. Now, Lieutenant Campbell immediately recognized this as improbable and became suspicious about Sergeant Knight's version of the events because it made no sense that Johnson would have received an injury to the back of his head and a laceration over his eye at the same time from a single fall backward. So the, there were holes in the version and in the story, if you will, and it appeared to Lieutenant uh, Campbell that uh, Sergeant Knight was fabricating things and making up facts that uh, didn't happen. Sergeant Knight also lied to Lieutenant Campbell and lied in the report uh, when he stated that Johnson um, brought his, quote, right leg up to kick at deputies. So he told Lieutenant Campbell that and he put it in the report that the reason why he pushed Johnson backward was because he raised his leg, and again, that never happened. So Sergeant Knight committed the crime of battery when he struck Johnson and the felony crime of official misconduct when he lied in the report. Now, as to Corporal uh, Jesse, um, he initially provided information that was inconsistent with Sergeant Knight's false version of the events. But he came forward uh, a couple hours later uh, to Lieutenant Campbell and told her that Knight was wrong to have struck Johnson and that there was no lawful basis for his actions. Uh, Corporal Jesse told investigators that uh, he was not candid initially because he was, quote, processing what to do as he had never experienced anything like that in his 21-year career. He said he knew that he had to come forward and tell the truth, but it took him a while to do it. So Lieutenant Campbell, uh, after receiving uh, the information from Corporal Jesse, from talking to Mr. Johnson, and from viewing the physical evidence, uh, knew that there was a problem and she informed commanders of the incident on November 19th. Uh, we immediately commenced an internal affairs investigation. So that was on Friday, November 19th. Sergeant Knight, uh, as consistent and required by Florida law under the Police Officers Bill of Rights, was notified uh, of that investigation and put on notice of that investigation that day. Uh, three days later on Monday, uh, November 22nd, Sergeant Knight abruptly resigned from the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office and we immediately began a criminal investigation. Uh, former Sergeant Knight was arrested at about 10.30 a.m. this morning. Uh, he was charged with, again, one count of battery and one count of official misconduct. He bonded out of the jail after posting a $2,500 bond. The internal investigation is going to continue as to Corporal Jesse regarding policy violations, but there's no evidence that he touched Johnson or that he committed any crime. So again, this is a photo to my left, uh, to your right, uh, of Mr. Johnson. That's the booking photo of uh, former Sergeant Knight, and I'll take any questions that you have. just terrible it's I know it, it's it's almost almost makes you speechless because you know you don't know what to say this is so terrible it's so wrong it's so everything that we don't stand for and what we don't do and are not supposed to do especially you take somebody that's been here for 25 years uh, that doesn't have any problems in his past uh, is a supervisor um, you know and, and all the struggles that we've had over the last you know year and a half in law enforcement and stressed about doing the right thing and treating people right and treating people fairly and you know not doing any of this nonsense. Um, it, it's it, it's it, it sets us back and it, it's just terrible. It's just it, it's so wrong. It, it leaves you with really just a knot in your gut. It leaves me with a knot in my gut because you know it, it it's just not what we do. 
It's not who we are. It's not what we stand for. And by and large, it's not. These are uh, anomaly situations. These are, you know, one-offs in the big scheme of things. We have almost 3,000 inmates. We have almost uh, 3,000 employees here in the sheriff's office. And by and large, the absolute majority of them are doing the right thing every day, and we're treating people right, and we're accomplishing what, what's expected of us. And then you have something like this. So it's, it's, uh, it's just terrible. Yeah, he's fine. Uh, you know, he, he you know cleaned up from that. Uh, they were able to suture the wound. Um, no serious injuries. That's why he was charged. That's why Knight was charged with simple battery as opposed to aggravated battery, because as it turns out, that there, if there, if the injuries had been more serious, then he would have been charged with a felony, uh, which is aggravated battery. But uh, it, it didn't warrant that. Sheriff, after something like this, have you all talked about maybe additional training, or do you think it's just with just this one sergeant? Right here? You can't train against stupid, you know. I mean, really. I mean, they don't, they don't need more training. We don't do this, you know. And you know, and, and you know, and one of the things that you know I would have liked to see you talk about training, if you will, and, and trying to instill in people, is, and you know, I got to be careful about it because it's still a part of an internal investigation as to Corporal Jesse. But you know, I'll just say, generally speaking, we changed and made sure that we were very clear in our policies last year um, that. Any member of the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office that sees any other member engage in excessive force has to act immediately to stop it. And, you know, the, and this happened very fast, very fast. So we're going to flush all this out. But what I would certainly want to see is somebody stop it to begin with and then come forward much faster and not have to think about what the right thing to do is. So I, I think in, in that respect. But as far as what Knight did, We've got great policies. We've got effective policies. We've got great training. We've got all the things in place. And to the extent that there's ever a, if you will, silver lining in something, it shows that all that works because this was all self-detected by us. We had the right protocols. Lieutenant Campbell was on it. Other people were on it. And we were able to you know, detect what happened. And so the, the checks and balances that we have are effective. Uh, you don't ever want to use them, but they're effective. So, but as far as what Knight did, it, it, we don't need more policies. We don't need more training. We just need less people like him. Chair, what do you say to a community who is already hesitant to, you know, have a relationship with law enforcement mm -hmm. and they see something like this? What's yeah. You know, like I said before, it, it definitely causes, it, it, it sets us back, uh, it causes the job to be harder, it causes the relationship to be harder, it causes the trust uh, maybe not to be there as much as we want it to be, uh, because what we say says we're trying to do the right thing, we are doing the right thing, trust us, and trust us in mass as a whole, and then you got something like this. So I, I understand the concern, I understand, understand the skepticism. To be honest with you, it doesn't get much worse than this because this is a man who, you know, and forget about what he did. It doesn't matter what he did. You didn't even see me. I'm not sitting here talking about his charges. I'm not talking about any of that stuff because I don't care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are or what you did. He didn't deserve to get treated that way. And you got a man that's handcuffed behind his back. He's helpless. And the guy opens the cell door, slams him to the ground, slaps him in the face, punches him in the face, cuts open his face, pulls hair out of his head. Uh, you know, so when people say, you know, you got some law enforcement officers out there that are bad, that aren't doing the right thing, that are doing the wrong thing, they're right. And, and all we can do is hold them accountable to the maximum amount we can. And that's what we've done here. We have fired him, or he quit, or I would have fired him, and um, criminally charged him. And to send a message to everybody else, this isn't who we are. This isn't what we do. That's not what this profession is all about. And hopefully, um, you know, it doesn't replicate itself. How long does an investigation like this take? Usually it takes longer than this. If we had gone down, if he hadn't come in on Monday and quit, and there's a balance between the administrative investigation or the internal affairs investigation and the criminal investigation, 
Um, you know, you know, would we still would we be here today with a criminal investigation? I don't know because we'd have to balance between the two. But when he came in, when we put him on notice, this happened on the 19th. He was put on notice on the 19th. On Monday, uh, he quit on the 23rd. We immediately transitioned it over to the criminal investigation, and now we're a week, week later, and we're announcing the arrest, and he's already been charged and booked into the jail. So that's pretty quick, you know. We and I wanted to make sure we move fast with it. Uh, for a number of reasons, uh, and we need to get to the bottom of it. We also need to send a message that we're not playing. And you know, anybody here or, or anybody in any law enforcement agency that thinks that they're above the law is just flat out wrong. And don't do it. <laughs> you know, this is, like I said, it, it, it's very frustrating. Very frustrating with um, all the things that we have done, all the things that we have accomplished where we have moved the needle. But what I hope is, is that people recognize that law enforcement's no different than anything else or anybody else. We're not perfect. Uh, we do have imperfection. We have people among us sometimes that don't do the right thing. Uh, but those of us that do are gonna take swift and effective action. We're gonna hold them accountable. And we're gonna maximize everything we can to ensure that they are accountable. So, you know, the next step will be in the prosecution phase. I talked to the state attorney today. He's aware of it. Uh, the case will go out to the state attorney's office, and, you know, they'll make decisions as to what they do with it. But, um, you know, I, I'll just ask again for the public to have confidence in us, have the trust that they can, because there's a whole lot of us that are doing the right thing. And you're going to have a few here and there uh, that mess up, and we're going to hold them accountable. All right, thanks everybody, appreciate it.